Hey guys, Mrs. Dudley here, and I am excited to interview my friend Abby Artemisia. You guys might recognize her. She's come to our class a few times. We also have a class set of her book, Herbal Handbook for Homesteaders, and her name's right here at the bottom. Um, and in this book, it's just a really good representation of many different herbs and different um, ways you can use herbs, ways you can identify herbs. The pictures are really nice. When we get back to school, we'll be definitely checking it out and doing some of the things in there. Today, Abby's going to introduce herself. We're going to watch one of her YouTube videos that she posted a couple of years ago. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the best practices for foraging. Uh, the video that we're going to show is about a little tiny plant that you might be seeing in your yards right now. It's called ground ivy, so it's really, really small. It's got these little purple flowers on it. Um, I have these right outside my front door, so I'll let you introduce yourself, Abby. Hi, I'm Abby Artemisia, and I am a botanist, herbalist, and forager. I grew up in Cincinnati and still get there quite a bit. And now I live in the mountains of North Carolina, and I actually met Mary because we both went to the same college, Miami University, which is actually in Ohio, <laughs> <laughs> and both went there for botany. So it was an incredible education, and I learned all about the foundation of plants and how they're related, and then taught myself a lot and apprenticed with an herbalist to learn what we do with the plants and so how we make medicine out of them and how we forage them, how we can cook them and eat them. Abby, tell us a little bit about what's in your background right now. Yeah, so I'm sitting in front of my apothecary. So behind me, there are all these jars and it's actually pretty huge. So if you can see all wow. that. <laughs> Wow. 95% of that is dried herbs and medicines I have made from plants that I harvested myself. Um, mostly here in North Carolina, some actually in Ohio. So it's really important to me to work with local plants because I highly believe that they're adapted to the same habitat that we are, so they're the best medicine for us. Nice. Um, I like how you brought in how we met a uh, little coffee shop in Northside, and we didn't actually overlap at school, which is a little bit of a bummer. I had just finished, and she was just starting, um, but it was a great spark, and we've definitely, obviously, kept in touch ever since. So we're going to see this clip, and then we'll be right back with Abby. Hi, this is Abby Artemisia from the Wander School. We're here in Burnsville, North Carolina, hanging out in the ground ivy patch. This is ground ivy right here. Its Latin name is Glaucoma heteracea, and it's in the mint family. And I can tell it's in the mint family because it has a square stem. It has these opposite leaves, so we can see they're directly opposite each other on the stem and it's got these flowers that have little tiny lips on the bottom petal. But it doesn't smell like your usual mint. Um, it has an aromatic smell though, but it's not very minty. I love talking about this plant because it's what some people call a weed, but what's the definition of a weed? The definition of a weed is any plant growing anywhere you don't want it. But what we find out a lot of times is that weeds are often the most useful plants. And this is one of my favorites. It's not one of the best just for eating because it does have such a strong taste and smell, but it's very medicinal. And so what I will do is usually make a tea out of it, or you can make a tincture with which is an alcohol extract. And it's great for lots of things. It's one of the best herbs I know for sinus congestion. Also, uh, people that I know have had success with taking the tincture 
for tinnitus or ringing of the ears. It has also been known to remove lead and heavy metals from the body. If you don't like the taste of it and you're taking it as a tea, just add some other mints into the tea and it will taste a lot better. So we have this little non-assuming mint plant, but it really packs a strong herbal punch. All right, Abby, so thank you for teaching us a little bit about ground ivy. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, you can talk about that, um, or we can jump right into the horticulture skills you wanted to show us today. Yeah, sure. Actually, they overlap because I wanted to talk about the safety and ethics and sustainability of foraging. Ground ivy is known for is removing heavy metals from the body. <laughs> so it's great for that and known for that by herbalists, but it can also take up heavy metals from the ground. So one thing I would say is, you know, you picking it right outside your front door is probably fine, but for folks who live in older houses, that air Hang on, buddy. Nope, nope. Can can you let Miss Abby talk? Because she's telling us something. What? We have to, we have to listen. <laughs> so for folks who live in older homes, you might have lead paint on your house if your house is older. And so you wouldn't want to harvest from right close to your house because that paint can flake off and fall into the soil. Also, if you live close to a highway, when people use leaded gas that fell onto the earth from the air. So you'd want to be really careful, just like with anything of where you harvest it from, but especially this plant because it does um, chemicals from the earth. Oh, that's so, so uh, thank you so much for telling us that. Cause like I said, I got this right outside my front door. My house was yeah. built in 1957. So there's a high probability that there is lead paint. Um, so while we can look at it and smell it, we probably don't want to be eating it. Yeah, pretty? so you just want to harvest from further away, right? So from your backyard, maybe just further around the house. Cool. And But it's a great lead-in into how do we forage safely. And the one thing that I would really stress for anybody who watches this video, if you only take one thing away is 100% positive identification. Super important, especially for folks just getting started because people always ask me, are there any lookalikes for that plant? And that's honestly the hardest question I ever get asked because it really depends how much you know. So the more you know, the less lookalikes there are because the more you can recognize in those tiny details. And it's all about using our senses. Definitely not ingesting anything until we're 100% sure. So if you don't know what it is, you can ask somebody what it is. And then also just being careful where you're harvesting from. So are people spraying pesticides in that area or any other chemicals? Is there going to be runoff? from a road. So if you're near a road, there's going to be chemicals left on that road from the cars. And when it rains, those chemicals are going to wash off into the surrounding land. And then there will also be air pollution that will settle from the cars. So we want to be really careful. And then anywhere where there's something like power lines, um, people are going to be spraying herbicides to keep the plants from growing around the power lines. Um, so we want to be careful where we're harvesting from. Always make sure we have permission if it's on public or private land that we have permission to harvest there. And also to be safe if you're going out in the woods, use common sense. So, you know, long pants, closed-toed shoes, especially if you're allergic to poison ivy. And she, um, poison ivy. she did say poison yeah. ivy. That's it. That's right. <laughs> Guys, this is my son, Atlas. I'm listening. You are listening. So, yeah, basic safety. Always, of course, tell somebody where you're going if you're going to be outside alone and in the woods. For you kids, 
You should take a buddy with you. <laughs> with wild plants, there might not be very many of them. So we don't want to take too many. And this really takes getting to know those plants really well. So we want to make sure if we're going to harvest them, that there's a lot of them there. So it can continue to grow and reproduce and it will be there for a long, long time. So that means if you see a patch of that plant and there's 10 there, I probably would just leave that plant and not harvest any. But if you see maybe five patches of 10, I would be comfortable taking one to two plants from there. And so that could be if we're harvesting the whole plant, including the roots, because that plant's not going to come back. But there are some other more sustainable ways to harvest it. So if we're just harvesting the leaves, then I would feel more comfortable taking more of that plant. But I'd still just take a couple of leaves from each plant because that's the way that plant makes its food, right? Through photosynthesis. So we want to make sure it can continue to do that. And sometimes even when we harvest roots, we can leave the very bottom of the root still in the ground and it will continue to grow. So we can do that, but it really takes getting to know that plant and seeing it over and over again in the wild to know how prolific it is. That's a good so, vocab word. I like that. Prolific. prolific. <laughs> <laughs> there have been times where I've been disappointed and I've said, you know, really like to find some ramps today, but I either don't find any because they're over harvested or I'd find a small patch and I don't feel comfortable harvesting any. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes the right choice is not the easy one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Thank you. Welcome. And I think there's just one other thing that I would say is really important. I mean, there's so many important parts, but I just like to remind everybody about having respect for the plants and gratitude. I think it's so much easier when you're wild harvesting a plant to practice this than when you're buying it from the grocery store and you don't know where it's coming from. But when you see it growing in nature and you see how beautiful it is and the habitat it's growing in, it's a lot easier to have respect for that plant. But just remember that if we harvest everything that's there, it won't be there anymore for anybody else, for, for future generations, for our friends and family members. And I like to just say a thank you as I'm harvesting because we just remember that this is a living being just like we are that's giving of itself or its whole life for our food and our medicine. I like that idea a lot of extending that, that relationship piece and that gratitude um, beyond just the people that can verbally reciprocate it and say, you know, I'm respecting this other living being. Thank you so much, Abby. Um, if some of the students have questions, definitely just let me know and I'll pop them over to you. Um, I'm really looking forward to having you come back and hang out at our school. If anybody watching wants to get your own copy of the book, you can find it at thewanderschool.com on the products page. I appreciate you talking to us today. You're so welcome. Thank you for continuing to spread this information. Bye-bye.